Yesterday, we closed by reflecting that Mary continued to listen to God's messenger who made a profound statement that many of us would like to hear. The statement was repeated by Jesus in the Gospels, later by St. John Paul II and many others. St. Luke's Gospel tells us, the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear Lord, as we continue our spiritual journey with Mary, we too ask for your grace and courage not to be afraid, only to trust that you are with us always in our own journey, that we too be open to do your will as Mary was. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. I've always enjoyed reading, and when I began to read the Bible as a teenager, and later on as a young adult, I went through the whole New Testament. Did it make sense? Did I pray it? Stay tuned for more on that question. Once again, I thank you for being with us on our journey. Some of you may have noticed that we are still in St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, and in no rush to move on. Our intent is, as I have been advised many times, not to just read the Bible, but to pray the words it contains. This is not a scholastic exercise, but time to take in the events of an, and the encounter between the angel and Mary, who as a human being, although free from sin, might have been taken back with the words of the angel that awakened her vocation, which was to be the handmaid of the Lord. Some of us have had some discernment and contemplation about the days and years ahead. Retirement, family, health, and so on. Yet, for Mary, when faced with the opportunity to become the mother of God, it was her unquestionable trust in God that helped her to reply simply and profoundly with the words, let it be to me according to thy word. The question remains, was she still just a little bit afraid? How many times do you commit to someone to a task and ask yourself later on the question, did I do the right thing? Let's consider for a moment, you are faced with a difficult decision. How much faith would you put in the statement for someone saying to you, do not be afraid? When they receive this message from the angel, do not be afraid, we can safely assume that in her love and trust in God, there was no question or condition. Her immediate fears and doubts were replaced with a total freedom to say yes, because she was completely open to doing God's will. Do you live with questions in your mind and heart? For example, what should you do in life? Get married, remain single, what job should you get to support yourself? Where should you live? How can you overcome your loneliness when you can't get out to socialize and so on? I wish I had a custom-made solution for those life choices. It was suggested to me when I too was asking many questions about my future that I should stop running from one thing to the next and stop racing from one thought to thought and going nowhere and instead concentrate on two things. First, pray. Become persistent in prayer. Have a dialogue with Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. Pick up the Bible. One option is to open it at a random and select a passage to meditate on or use the gospel of the day. Read the passage a couple of times and try to place yourself in the story. Take your time. God is in no rush. 
nor should you be if you want to become serious in your prayer life. The second is to talk to someone about your fears, someone you trust. It could be a priest, a religious person, perhaps someone who is retired and could share their life experiences most. But most importantly, find someone who is a good listener. Do not be afraid. Let the Spirit of Christ lead you. The more you are open and trusting, the more you will become awake to your calling and how best to serve God. A Gospel commentator wrote that, the Archangel Gabriel tells the Blessed Virgin that she is to be the mother of God by reminding her of the words of Isaiah, which announced that the Messiah would be born of a virgin, a prophecy which will find its fulfillment in Mary. Let us keep in mind that Mary, who was well-versed in Holy Scripture, would come to realize as she experienced the Advent stories of the Annunciation, the Visitation, and the Nativity itself, that she was to be the Mother of God. To this realization that she was to become the Mother of God make her life easier? Did it answer all her questions? Perhaps not as we read further on in the four Gospels. What this did was fully awaken her vocation on her calling in life. It also assured her not to be afraid that God would be with her all the way to the end of her earthly journey. Some of you might be thinking, I'm not that good in prayer and very bad at focusing. Don't give up. Pray God's word the Bible repeatedly until you learn how to focus on a specific sentence or word that may apply to you. Be patient, persistent, be open to God's will. Give it a try. Be amazed at yourself. Be amazed at the Holy Spirit of God in your life. Amen. Tomorrow, we will focus on the gift of the Holy Spirit that we receive upon becoming adopted children of God through our baptism and what Mary was to do to cooperate with God in fulfilling the prophecy. Pray with me. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.